Now that we've gone over all the transformations, let's now apply that. So example one says, write the function whose graph is, and the part A says a graph of y equals x cubed, but is shifted to the right four units. So from that first page, if I'm shifting it to the right, then that needs to go inside my function and it will be a minus. So to make something inside of an x cubed, we'll put it in parentheses. So this will be y equals x minus four cubed. Now we wanna shift down. So to shift down, that's gonna go outside of my function and it will be a minus. So y equals the square root of x minus four. Absolute value of x shifted to the left four units to the left goes inside and that will be a plus. So this will be y equals inside means in these absolute value bars. So the absolute value of x plus four. And then the graph of y or y equals one over x and is shifted up four. So now if we are going up four, that is outside of my function and up is plus. So y equals one over x plus four. The graph of y equals x squared that is reflected across the x. If we are reflecting across the x-axis, that negative just needs to go out front. So this will be y equals negative x squared. Now, if I want to take this cubic root and reflect it across the y, when we reflect across the y, that negative goes inside of my function. So inside means under that radical. So y equals the cubic root of negative x. Here we have the graph of y equals one over x and is vertically stretched by a factor of five. So really and truly, whenever you do vertical stretches or compresses, that A just goes out front. So you know it's getting stretched if A is greater than one, and you know it's getting compressed if A is between zero and one, but you really treat them the same way no matter what. So if this is getting stretched with a factor of five, this is my A. So this will be five times my function. Now, my math lab might take this as your answer, but you can simplify this. Fractions, you multiply straight across. So you can put five over one. So five times one is five, and one times x is x. So this is better, but my math lab might take five times x over, or one over x. Okay, we have the graph of the square root of x vertically compressed by a factor of one fifth. So it is compressed because this number is between zero and one. So same thing, whatever we are compressing by, that is my a, so that goes out front. And we'll multiply that by the function, which is the square root of x. And this one's similar. If I put the square root of x over one, just like I did the five over one, multiply straight across, And this will become the square root of x, one times the square root of x. I'm gonna put the square root of five, sorry. Okay, one times the square root of x is the square root of x, and then five times, that's all over one, five times one is five. So my math lab might take that if you don't want to mess with multiplying fractions, but that's not hard to do, and it's just kind of better. Now, A through F, or uh, H, if I know my alphabet, A through H all have one type of transformation here. You can do any kind of combination with these, and that's what I and J are. I and J are going to be a combination of multiple things. So here we have a graph 
of y equals x cubed, but it shifted to the left six and it shifted down three. Okay. So to the left six, left means that's going to be inside of my function and it's gonna be a positive. And to do inside of an x cubed, we need parentheses. So that will be x plus six cubed. And then down three, down three is outside of the function and it's a minus. So it's been transformed in two different ways, both vertical and a horizontal shift. And then J, and I keep wanting to change this. So we're gonna change this problem a little bit. But we have the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. It is going to be shifted up two units, reflected across the x-axis, and is vertically stretched by a factor of two. Um, just so that when we look back, we have two different twos here. Let's just change one of them. So let's just make this a factor of three. And hopefully by the time you get your notes, I will have finally remembered to change that. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with this reflection. When it's reflected across the x, that negative needs to go out front. So I'm going to start with a negative. And then it's vertically stretched by a factor of 3. No matter what that factor is, that needs to go out front of my function. So this is my a. So this will be negative three out front. And then we're shifting up two units. So if we are going up, that goes outside of my function and up is plus. So we will have the absolute value of X plus two. So starting with that absolute value of X reflected across the X is the negative. The factor, that's my a, goes out front of the function, and up to means outside the function, at the end, up is positive. 